I do want to bring in right now uh, Diamond Strategy CEO and President and former CENTCOM commander, retired Army Major General Michael Diamond. He is with us. And former Assistant Secretary of Defense and Center for American Progress, Senior Fellow Larry Korb. Guys, it's great to have you both here. And I guess, Major General, I want to start with you on something that Blake brought up. And we were wondering if he was going to actually, you know, say anything about Senator McCain, who, yes, is fighting for his life right now in Arizona, suffering from brain cancer. And he didn't. Does anyone in the, in, in the military kind of take that as, do they take offense to that? Do you think that the president's not honoring one of our POWs? I, I don't think so. That's, uh, that's a tough one based on the situation that has existed between the two of them. Uh, but it, it, it would have been a good gesture. Yeah, it would, it would have been nice to see. Certainly, I agree with you on that. But, Larry, at the same time, let's talk about what this does give our nation's heroes, in particular, whether it's funding, it's, well, it's a pay raise, family housing. Uh, but a lot of the aircraft, in particular, has been shown to be in disrepair, whether it's Navy aircraft or Air Force jets. And the president really saying, okay, it's time to fix these issues. Um, what does that mean to you? Well, it means that we're finally over the bad days of the Budget Control Act. You know, in 2010, we actually spent more than we're spending this year, uh, particularly if you control for inflation. But what happened after that, the Republican Tea Party people took control of the Congress and put a cap on all discretionary spending. So <clears throat> Obama in his last year got the cap lifted somewhat, and Trump in his first two years has got it lifted again. And he's right that artificial cap put it all, made a, a, a lot of things that should have been fixed were not fixed and a lot of the things we should have bought we did not. You know, Major General, I mentioned some of this earlier, but all of the new equipment that the military is getting. Besides that, what is the biggest takeaway in your mind from the bill that was signed today? $716 billion. This is the fastest passage we've had of a defense spending act in 41 years. Well, I think Congress and the president and the administration knew exactly what they wanted to go after, and it was primarily uh, combat equipment, combat forces, strengthening them. I see this as kind of a makeup for the 10 years, or excuse me, the last eight years that Larry had alluded to, uh, and, and it's a great step, but we're not there yet. Uh, we, we did not make a dent in logistical support equipment. Uh, which I would expect to be in the next NDAA, uh, where we've got some platforms uh, that have deteriorated and depreciated long beyond their lifespan. Can you, uh, Major General, can so, you be more specific for us? What logistical, are, what were you talking about, sir? Well, uh, aircraft that uh, carry C 130s, uh, C 141s, you know, a lot of the, especially C 130s, mm. uh, we probably have the, the first C-130 that I rode on that's still in the force back uh, when I came in in 1974. Oh, goodness. Uh, I'd say some of the, the ground things that carry our tanks, Bradleys, engineer equipment, gotcha. a lot of those are way beyond what their depreciable life has been. So yeah. those are two examples right there. Oh, well, that's, Thank you for, for sharing that with us. And, and Larry, I want to ask you about something else that's in here. Let's talk about uh, the actual beefing up of, well, let's see, the defense of foreign investment in U.S. companies. This really strengthens CFIUS. Uh, again, that is uh, the Committee for Foreign Investment in the U.S. That strengthens CFIUS. It's going to make it much harder for, frankly, the Chinese or even the Russians to partner up with American companies, steal our technology, military or otherwise. What did you make of that part of the bill and the fact that funding is going in that direction? Well, I think it's a recognition of the fact that the, the, you have a global economy and it's very difficult to see who owns a company. Since President Trump has been in there, he's, you know, he's stopped two mergers using this one about Qualcomm. Uh, and what you don't know is when somebody says they want to buy it, where are they getting the, the money from? This thing was actually started in 1975 by President Ford, but it has really taken on a lot more uh, uh, impetus in the last couple of years because of the way the global market is. Yeah, well, I, I really hope that we do see, of course, more funding coming down for the military, and we've got a lot of it today, that is for sure. Larry Korb and, and General Michael Diamond, thanks to both of you. Hopefully we're not going to be looking at C-30s from 1974, Major General, <laughs> uh, in five years from now. I hope, I hope that changes. Thanks, guys, very much. You're appreciate welcome. You. Bye.